Hey everyone, I'm Tony. It's Christine with TNC Travel. We want to talk to you today about Nischwinstein Castle in Germany. Do's, don'ts, tips, and tricks. This is Walt Disney's inspiration for the Sleeping Beauty Castle. And it's actually become the iconic logo of all the theme parks and the studio itself. So here's what happened to us. We were in Munich. We had about four or five days and we had a day with no plans. So we decided to visit. So we didn't do a lot of research beforehand. We usually try to plan out everything here in the States before we head out there. What we ended up doing was taking a tour. The castle is actually 70 miles outside of Munich and there's multiple ways to get there. Our first do is try to go early. Look, Germany is a hot spot for tourism and this castle is no different. So we recommend trying to wake up early, get ahead of the crowd, and really just enjoy the castle to yourself. The journey there is so beautiful. Luscious greens, country field, country-like. It was beautiful. I definitely did enjoy looking out the window. And if you do go early, you grab a cup of coffee and a croissant, and it's so relaxing. One of our tips that we're going to recommend is do some research and download a self-guided tour. Now, Rick Steves is obviously one of the best in the business. And on the website, there is a comprehensive guide you can read. And I'll add that link in the description below. But there's also a YouTube video that dives really deep into the castle, its history, and so on. I'll add that link in the description below as well. Tip number two is to go on your own. There are ways where you can take a train from Munich to the castle. It will save you a lot of money and time and you can plan your day however you like. It's gonna take a little bit longer. On the tour bus that we took, it took about an hour and a half to get to the castle, where if you take your own train, it's gonna take about two and a half hours. We personally did not enjoy the tour that we took. Uh, the tour guide was very rude and just not very friendly and didn't really give us any interesting information. We're not even going to share the name of the company because that's just not how we roll. We're not going to put them down. He could be just one bad apple for an entire business that does a lot of good. So we're not going to share the name of the company in this video, but save yourself a little bit of money and take the train and be sort of on your own time compared to being in a group like we were. You get to the castle. What do you do first? The castle it sits high on a mountain. You can be a champ and hike it up. Hey, why not show off your muscles? Or you can do what we did and we bought a ticket for the bus to take us up to the castle to the entrance. And you buy that down at the on the grounds level. There's a store and you can buy your ticket and it's just pretty much i think it was cash only a few euros just to get you up to the castle because it is a long long hike i don't recommend it unless you're in really really good shape and you have a lot of time on your hands our next tip is actually an obvious one but we're surprised at how many people we've given this advice to over the years pack plenty of water and other essentials like hats, jackets, sunscreen, that kind of stuff. There are places to buy those things, but they're limited and it's really expensive because it is a tourist destination. So we recommend packing all the essentials ahead of time and just making sure you have everything ready to go. Okay, our next really big tip is to be careful on the bridge. As you can see in this video footage, everyone wants that iconic photo of the castle from a distance and there's this tiny rickety bridge where literally hundreds of people are on there at the same time so i'm going to give you a couple tips strap your camera your gopro your phone whatever it may be to your wrist if possible now i know that doesn't make sense with some phones and cases but with my gopro and some other cameras on the market strapping the camera to your wrist is the way to go and just to be sure you don't drop it into the gorge uh, also another tip is there's only really one main entrance onto the bridge. I recommend walking to the farthest corner away from that entrance where there's a lot less people. You're not going to be fighting for room at the center of the bridge and you're going to actually get a better angle of the castle and the mountains that are behind it. So a couple tips and tricks that we learned while we were there so that you don't repeat the same mistakes. Get on the bridge, walk all the way to the opposite side, take your pictures and then come back. As an official don't, we don't recommend you take a tour to actually get to the castle. Now, there's other ways of getting there. We've already discussed the train. We've already shared with you our negative experience with the tour that we took. But also, we want to dive a little deeper. You can skip nonsense like we did, like stopping at a gift shop 
and we actually stopped at another castle or palace if you will it's called the linderoff and it's pretty and the outside is really beautiful but if that's not something you're interested in you have no choice you have to go there with the rest of the group so it's just not something that we had a ton of fun doing and so it would have been nice to be in control of our own time go straight to Nishwinstein and enjoy that area and then come back plus once you get to the castle you can't take pictures on the inside and you're only in there for like a total of 30 minutes so it kind of negates another need to book these tours with a tour guide by just going on your own through a train and then coming back into the city wherever you're staying. We do recommend that you walk the grounds and enjoy the structure from multiple angles. The structure itself is stunning and you're going to enjoy it just by getting to the area, walking around, taking pictures from the bridge, but you're also gonna enjoy the landscaping that surrounds the castle. There's some chairs, benches, you can sit around and just enjoy the scenery. It's beautiful. I think the, the surroundings, the yard of the castle are just as beautiful as the castle. So just take some time, look around. Whether it's the mountains and the lake or the bridge itself from a different angle, just go and kind of take your time and enjoy it. Because for us, this was one of the most iconic places that we went to in our numerous trips to Europe. After you're done looking at the castle, you should walk down. Walking down to the grounds where most of the shuttles are or the buses or where you might catch a taxi to back to the train station is a very easy walk. You're going downhill a lot. It's beautiful. We definitely, definitely enjoyed it. So highly recommend you do that. Take the bus uphill, walk downhill. It's breathtaking. It'll take about 20 to 25 minutes. But you take your time, go at your own pace. There's no rush, this is your vacation. Now, hopefully this video has given you a little bit of insight into the journey to Nishwinstein Castle. We know that we couldn't find a ton of information when we went online ahead of the trip. We made a lot of mistakes along the way that cost money that we didn't necessarily need to spend and we could have spent it on something else. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. We're usually pretty quick to respond and check out some of our other videos on our page, like our Coliseum do's, don'ts, tips and tricks. And like and subscribe if you like what we're doing. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll talk to you soon.